my largest deal so far, 139,475.46. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What's up guys, Brad here. It's a lovely Saturday morning here in Seaside, Florida, Farmer's Market here on the beach. It's been amazing. Uh, wanted to share with you this quick case study of Marcel Davis. So Marcel is on track to do a million dollars net his very first year of implementation of the investor creator systems. And I've often like, like what is it that separates success in real estate from the people that continue to struggle? And I think Marcel really encompasses this, encompasses this really with his mindset. This ability to persevere even in the face of bad news, even when things look like they're not gonna work out, that you continue and you trust the process. We asked Marcel to, to share with us some of his wins, also some of the, his lessons, so his top two or three takeaways that you can implement into your business as well. I think you're gonna be really, really excited with this training. Check it out, here's Marcel and I talking about his first year with Investor Creator. So we have Marcel with us tonight. Marcel's been with us, I think about six, seven months. We're gonna talk about his journey prior to real estate, prior to Investor Creator, and just kind of see what's working, the challenges that he's had, the wins that he's had, and just have fun with it so that you guys can gain some insight into a working company, a working process, and also build that belief muscle over time. So Marcel, dude, appreciate you being with us very much. Hey, Brad, thank you. For sure. So man, for the people that don't know you, kind of give your background prior to real estate, and then what made you jump into real estate in the first place? Well, uh, I've been in real estate for a while. Uh, I started in real estate actually about 20 years ago uh, as a telemarketer. Okay. Yeah, I was selling mortgages out of phone books. You know, remember those? <laughs> so yeah, For sure. Yeah. So I started as a telemarketer and then I became a loan officer um, back in 2005. And then I worked as a loan officer from 2005 to 2008 uh, when the market crashed. And then I made a complete shift, went to nursing school, became an RN. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I went from making a lot of money to like no money when the market crashed. So I went back yeah. to school, um, became an RN. But I've already gotten used to a certain, you know, lifestyle, a, a certain revenue from real estate from before. So even though I was working for yeah, as an RN, I always wanted to get back into real estate. So I worked as an RN for about six years. And then I started uh, two residential assisted living facilities. So I owned the facility. I owned the building. So that was my way back into investing into real estate. So I've been doing that for the last eight years. And it's kind of... I scaled the business now. I have a manager, but I still wanted to go further in real estate. So I um, came up with a plan. I wanted to start a real estate firm. Um, and, you know, it was going to cost me, when I did the business plan and everything like that, it was going to cost me 100000 So I was doing research online, and that's how I ran into uh, one of your commercials. Uh, and then I checked it out and um, one thing led to another and now we're here. So, yeah, right on. So yeah. a lot of people after getting decimated in mortgage, just like everybody did back then, would have been hesitant to jump back into anything that resembles real estate. So what made you jump back in? Well, um, I, I kind of had one foot in, one foot out, was doing the RN, but I was still, you know, had rental properties. but. What made me jump back in is that um, now I have the education. You know, uh, now I've reached a certain stage where I have a a, a steady um, a steady revenue as far as my investment properties, mm -hmm. and I I know I could build on that based on what I'm learning now. So this is what I'm doing full time as far as real estate investing. Um, the, the thing in 2008, 2009, a lot of people ran away. And the, the reason why is because, you know, a lot of people were kind of doing the same thing. So when the market crashed, nobody knew how to pivot and nobody knew how to navigate. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And that was part of my problem. I didn't know anything else. We were just doing loans. I didn't know anything about creative financing. I didn't know much about anything else. So when the market crashed, everybody just kind of left and that was it. But now with the education I have, I'm confident that I could do it long term now, you know, because we have so many different uh, creative ways we can do things. Yeah, I'm not going to say that we're looking, hopefully, to a market mm -hmm. correction or a market crash, but it would be okay. It yeah. would be okay. So, all right. At what point, what year did you start the residential assisted living? This is 2016. 2016. And at what point did you make more of a focus towards single family? Uh, I guess, let me back up and ask it this way. Whenever mm -hmm. you decided to jump in back into single family, the way that we do it, was it with Investor Creator in our systems or were you trying to make it work prior? No, I was trying to make it work prior. Um, the reason why I jumped back into real estate in 2016 was when I got married, right? So I was working a job at the time. I was a quality improvement specialist for an insurance company. And the reason why I quit the job, I said, look, I'm going back to the real estate. I remember asking permission to go to my own wedding. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, I had to get time off. It had yeah. to get approved. I was like, you know, that's when I decided uh, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to, you know, take a chance, go back into real estate full time, and I'm not going to turn back to a job ever again. You know, yeah. so that's when I decided to go in. Even though I had the uh, residential assisted living facilities, it was some nice income, you know, it's, it's a decent living, but I knew I could do more. Uh, yeah. so my partner, my wife, she's a realtor. So we, we did some wholesale properties, but we get some deals here and there, nothing consistent. Mm -hmm. And, um, I never had a mentor. I never joined a program before. Um, we were just making it work. Um, so we tried and tried for years. Yeah, we made some money, but it was just up, down, up, down, nothing consistent at all. So that's when I decided to reach out, try to start a firm, did all my research, and then I ran into uh, Investor Creator. Gotcha. So mm -hmm. prior to Investor Creator, what would you say were your top two or three biggest struggles? Deal, deal flow, number one. Uh, number two to probably fund in. Okay. You know, yeah, because a lot of deals I would just assign or, or wholesale because I couldn't take them down myself. So I'll just, you know, you know, assign it or wholesale it. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so how many deals single family did you think you had done prior to Investor Creator? I, you know, shelving the residential assisted living because that's just a different model. Mm -hmm. But, you know, wholesale deals, just ballpark. I mean, how many deals do you think you'd done? Uh, we'd, we'd wholesale and we'll do a couple of flips, probably like four or five a year. Four or five a year. Okay. So mm -hmm. you had a little bit more experience than I would say a lot of people that come into Investor Creator. Is that pretty fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So I guess, man, like, because here's the thing, like a lot of people are dubious about coaching mentors, that kind of thing. And I get it because the entire reason that Investor Creator exists in the first place is because... I had a real estate mentor that ended up not being what I was told that the guy was. And so like, I, I get that kind of response to, um, to, to education and that kind of thing. So what I guess attracted you to how we do things or like, just what made you jump in? Well, a lot of, I, you know, I went to tons of seminars, you know? Um, yeah. And I, it's like I was meeting the same people over and over, you know. <laughs> in what way, though? Of, in, in the way their approach, their approach towards uh, real estate, you know, you could make this amount of money. The money, everybody knows real estate makes money. Yeah. But the how and the, the, the breaking it down into an actual uh, science and a, being able to um, being able to get a system to produce it over and over, that yeah. was the issue. And then the other issue is 
nobody really tells you what you're going into as far as the stress level, as far as what could go wrong, how to mitigate it, stuff like that. So when you start and you, you know, and you're working with certain people and you're going through different things and they're, you know, you're, you, they can't relate to you because they're not doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, they're, they're just running the program. They're not doing deals. They're not, you know, <laughs> so they're looking at you like, what's wrong with you? you know, right. so that doesn't give you much confidence. You're thinking what's normal, what's not normal. So um, it's hard to navigate in that type of environment because you don't get the right guidance. You don't get the right system to to reproduce success over and over. Yeah, hundred percent. I've always said, man, like if you're not doing the business, you have a shelf life because what works will continually change. Markets change, marketing changes, and so with that, you know, to to even be relevant, I think you, right. you have to be in the business. You got to be in the trenches with it. So, at what point did you join? Was that beginning of the year? Uh, no, the end of last year. The end of last year. Okay, so cool. This December, yeah. Okay, cool. So you jumped in. You you decided to do it. You committed. Like, tell us about the process of like jumping into the training and beginning implementation. Um. Yeah, jumping into the training. Um, it's interesting because the second week after I started the modules, I got a call for a health and safety issue with a with yep. a seller and i remember learning about sub two and my partner who's a realtor i said okay you know we're i'm learning about this method in, in how to close deals and so on and she was telling me that you can't do sub two sub two is illegal and right, stuff right. Like, <laughs> right you know so i was like, no you know it makes sense it works and so on and so forth anyhow i got the seller um, she had $90,000 mortgage on the property and she turned to me and she's like, you know, take the house. I don't want it because I can't afford the house and I need to go into a uh, assisted living at the same time. Wow. And, uh, she reached out to her family members. Nobody wanted it because nobody wanted to take on a mortgage and it's a condo and so on and so forth. So it's interesting. I, I'm just learn this material I'm talking about immersion uh mm -hmm. reach out to a talent company they said they could do it and then they came back the next week and said don't do sub two it's wrong it's a time bomb um it's not gonna work and they're not gonna do it and that's when i reach out to the group and the group found me a title company um uh, that could get it done so my immersion was pretty fast <laughs> into <Yeah>. uh, into <laughs> into uh, getting the first deal done. So jumping I mean, into I that, was, man. One, one thing, though, no, yeah. I, I want to say that I got these deals all the time before this deal, but I didn't know what to do with it. So I would always say, okay, they have a mortgage or whatever it is. I would either try to wholesale it or let it go, yeah. but I would, you know, I would just pretty much walk away from it. So... I call that investor creator remorse. So everybody understands what buyer's remorse is, where you wish you hadn't bought something. Investor creator remorse means that you think about all the deals that you missed, that you could have pulled off and all the cash flow you missed, all the equity that you missed. And this is especially true with wholesalers, you know, because a lot of wholesale wholesalers, they don't understand how to structure things at all. And with that, mm -hmm. they miss out on so much. And not only that, but the impact, the positive impact that you can make with sellers and get them out of those tough situations, you're not able to do. You know, like some of my best deals that I've ever had have been deals where three, four, five investors went in and said, nothing we can do, you know, and we look at it and we're like, there's an obvious solution to this, but there, it takes a certain skill set. So my question on that first deal, man, a lot of people would have been really unnerved whenever your realtor friend said, ah, can't do this. And then your title company that you've used in the past says, ah, can't do this. And then instead of saying, I, you know, I can't do this, you decided to really continue to look for a solution. I'm just curious why, man, like most people, maybe not most, but a lot of people would have said, you know, throw, throw the flag on the play, wave the, the, the white flag and said, I'm out. Like, what made you keep going? Yeah, I, I've always been that way. Um, 
especially this type of person who has 30 years experience and I've done deals with them before. I should have just believed them, right? right. <laughs> but, um, you know, when, when I was also studying the modules, it made complete sense to me. Um, aside from hearing what they said, I did my own research and I found out there's nothing wrong with doing subject two. So um, I reached out to the title company that the group recommend me and spoke to them and everything like that. So, and plus there was a big payoff in it too. So that's incentive yeah. to, you know, um, was $80,000 uh, equity capture. And I got about $10,000 at closing from the down payment from the, the buyer. So, I mean, it's worth a shot, right? So, so yeah. I just, yeah. find the way. Yes, yeah, so I figure out, I'm I'm gonna try it, you know, because I'm not gonna just let a couple people let me walk away from so much money. So, gotcha, hundred percent, man, love that. So, all right, ninety k in first position. You took that subject to. Was there any cash to the seller? The the sell the seller wanted zero walk away, um, and the reason why. She was in pre foreclosure with the association, so okay. I had to pay. I had to pay off the arrears, and I also had there was you know some cosmetic stuff had to be done on the property for about ten thousand painting, um, clearing out all the bulk trash because she was a hoarder, and stuff like that. So I put in twenty thousand. The um, buyer came and put down thirty thousand. So you know, I guess she felt like okay, if you have to put in this money. You know, so that's why she wanted zero walk away. Gotcha. Okay. So zero walk away to the seller, but you had money in a little bit of, of cosmetic rehab and then the association dues, which were to stop the foreclosure. And right. then you turned around and owner financed that property. Is that what you did? Yes. Okay, cool. So so cash flow after paying the first mortgage is nine hundred a month. Okay. So first deal you netted ten grand, nine hundred a month cash flow for how mm -hmm. long? So no, this is a 30 year mortgage, 30 year, 30 year note. So you got a uh, $900 per month coming in for the next 30 years. Mm -hmm. And then what is your note equity position on that deal? Um, I'm second place. So the first place is the underlying mortgage of second place. Right. But what, what's the equity position between your wrap and that first position lien? So the, on the, um, mortgage is 1247 a month. Um, that I'm collected, and the original principal interest is three hundred and forty dollars. So, yeah, gotcha, cool. So, but you sold the house for how much? I sold the house for two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. They still owe one seventy because they put one. Uh, they put uh, sixty percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So one seventy, and then there's ninety in first position. So you got an eighty thousand dollar note, right. ten thousand cash, and then mm -hmm. nine hundred per month on that deal. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So whenever you close that man, how did that feel? Uh, <laughs> I, was, I put it in the group right away. I, I couldn't believe it. You know, um, just to, well, I, I wanted to shut my wife up too, because <laughs> she, <laughs> you know, I mean, she was like, this is not going to work. on the recording. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she, you know, but we do that. Um, we joke like that, but you know, and then also with the title guy, you know, um, Who's a friend of mine, actually, and he's telling me, no, you can't do it because I've been working with him for about five, six years. So mm -hmm. he was trying to look out for me, I guess. Yeah. Um, but he just doesn't know. So, you know, um, but it felt good. I, you know, I, I was I was pretty happy about it. And it all actually helped me be more confident going forward. Um, I wanted more. Yeah, you know, well, we were talking. Thank you. All right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes, I just wanted more. I wanted to get more deals done. I was ready to start my PPC and just keep going. Yeah. Cool, right on. So I assume you started ads at that point. I started ads, uh, actually went out the country end of December. So when I came back, I started ads in January. Okay, yeah. so how's that gone? Oh, it's, I'm giving about a lead a day now. You know, so okay. it, so about the lead today, yeah. Cool. And so from the first deal, how many have we contracted to buy ballpark since then? Um, I have my numbers here. So yeah, just I've roll bought, through the numbers. Yeah. So I've, I've bought 13 houses. 13? Yeah. 
Cool. So I've sold uh, eight of them. So, so I still have five more um, that I need to unload here. Uh, my largest deal so far was, uh, I don't think you can see this, but see. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you got to call it out for the people that hear, are going to hear this on podcast. Oh, wait, and then that's my name here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, what, what was that um, number? All right. So my largest deal so far, 139,475 46. 139,000. Yes. Wow. So this, this is from the PPC. So this one, Hyatt Landlord had about 11 properties that, you know, she was just selling off. She is, this is our last property. Okay. But the thing is, she was trying to own her finance to the tenant, and then I guess something happened between her and the tenant. So she took the initial deposit that the tenant had, so they started having issues or whatever. So she just wanted me to pay off the mortgage on the property. Okay. Uh, she already made money from the deposit, 40000 took. Hey, you're muted, buddy. I don't know what happened. Here we go. There we yeah. go. So where was I? So um, she didn't want any walk away. Uh, she wanted me to pay off the mortgage on the property and um, also get rid of the tenant because she and the tenant started having issues after the tenant defaulted on the uh, the agreement they had to buy the house. Um, she already sold all her properties, so she was done, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So I got a law firm. I started working with them. Started also working with the tenant. You know, um, she was pretty upset that I didn't think it was close because she sounded like she wanted to sue the previous landlord and just kind of tie up the whole deal there. But we we smoothed her over. Uh, it was in Illinois. We smoothed her over, talked her through it, um, gave her some cash, and you know, in order for her to leave. And yeah, beautiful. Did you know that it was going to be a six figure deal when you bought it? You know, I was, yeah, I was hopeful, you know, but it had so many problems. Um, the, the tenant was a problem. It had an association, um, and also it was in, it's in Illinois, so they could, yeah. the tenant could tie up the property for years. So I didn't yeah, know what was going to happen. So I just kind of put one foot before the other and kept going. So you just decided, hey, we're going to try it and see what we can do, not look yeah. for the problem. Right. Yeah, right on. So what's been your favorite deal so far? It could this be that one. one. Yeah, one right too. on. Yeah, this <laughs> what's been your toughest deal? Oh, uh, man. Let me see. I, you know, it's funny. All the deals have a little toughness to it. Yeah. You know, um, every every deal has a little like you know little nuances that you you know little problems that you gotta solve but i i just have a different view of problems you know i just kind of figure out what i could do i don't kind of dwell on it um but every single deal had issues i remember i was closing a deal in georgia <laughs> and it was a mail away and fedex lost the package yep and the seller needed the money, but we needed the package to fund the deal. Right. And I remember him just chewing me out. <laughs> what is going on? I signed all the paperwork and the package was lost for like one week at FedEx. Oh my gosh. Never happened to me before. And I thought everything was going to, you know, he was threatening to sue this, that, that. And he didn't pay his mortgage for the month, the whole thing. So every, every deal I have, I've done had something where I had to like I had to navigate or come through. So I don't know, I just get used to it. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why we're we're paid what we're paid is to solve big problems. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like if we can change our vantage point from like I don't want problems to hey, let me get paid to solve big problems, 
then it's going to change our entire mindset with like what we're dealing with because the problems are going to come. Like right. the real estate transaction is a transaction that is that can at times have difficulty, you know, and and we're certainly dealing with people that are in a life circumstance oftentimes that makes them um, a little bit more erratic, a little bit more difficult to deal with. You know, I had a lady not long ago that was pre foreclosure. She inherited the house. She'd had a heart attack and she was going through a divorce. You know, and it's like, if I was this person, I would be irritable too. So sometimes you, you deal with irritable people and sometimes there's problems with paperwork and that, and I've certainly have, uh, it, for me, it's always UPS. I've never had a FedEx package lost. I've definitely had UPS yeah. lost. So, um, interesting. Was there anything that was surprising to you within the curriculum or the processes that you thought, man, this ain't going to work? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, when you, when I, when I, listen to the modules and and everything. I was like, why would, you know, especially the tired landlord. I mean, I, I've proven that it's real now, but I say, okay, why would somebody want to call an investor and just sell off the property versus just waiting another month, working with a realtor? Why would you give away that much money? But being in the situation and seeing them deal with the tenant and they're just scared, and they just don't want to deal with it anymore. And they already made money off their other properties. And they're older. They just want peace. <laughs> mm -hmm. People will give away, you know, um, a lot of equity. So that was surprising to me that there's so much people willing to just make a deal, get out of the house right away. Yeah. Um, it, uh, that was shocking. I thought, okay, it could happen, but not so much, but it's very common. Yeah. Well, I'll yeah. tell you, man, like here's my limiting beliefs over time that have all broken down. So number one was that um, nobody's going to sell me a house subject to, you know, mm -hmm. we're leaving the loan in place. I was 23 years old. I'm like, I'm too young to do this. People are going to know I don't have any money. Nobody's going to leave a loan in place. And then that started to happen. And I thought, well, it's because they don't really have a choice or pre foreclosure, tough market, 2010. You know, nobody's going to sell me a house with deep equity until that happened. And then I thought, well, you know, we're getting deep equity deals because we're paying cash at this point. We built up some capital. Nobody's going to owner finance me a deal at 0% interest until mm -hmm. that happened. And then finally, it was nobody's going to call me with a free house until mm -hmm. that happened. You know, and then it's like my limiting beliefs now it's like I, I don't know what's possible but i know that uh all of this is and it is for for people that like put in the work put in the effort follow the system you know then then people can can subscribe to for most people the amount of success that they want you know mm -hmm. so the 13 deals that you have bought do you know your equity position across those 13 uh, i don't have everything with me but i, I have Four notes. Um, five of them are on the market. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, you know, I have four notes. I have wholesale are assigned two of them. And then um, I guess you could call it wholesale daughter too. So hotel daughter gotcha. too. Yeah. 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 Cool. The reason I ask, man, is usually around 17 deals is a million. So I'm wondering at what point we're going to hit a million. Well, I've got you first I was marketed in um Alabama, Georgia. So I was getting smaller deals. So okay. the, the second deal I did was the guy wanted ten thousand. I ended up getting him to seven thousand. And then the house is only worth about eighty thousand. But it needed a lot of repairs. So I was end up sell, selling it for twenty five thousand. So I only made eighteen thousand on that. When I'm saying only eighteen thousand, <laughs> <laughs> only made eighteen thousand on that. So what I did now is switch my marketing to like Texas, where you know bigger yeah. states, where more. But it it worked out for me because I was just starting out to start with those smaller homes. I guess in my own mind, uh, um, the because I you know getting funding and all of that get going. Uh, testing the waters out, stuff like that. But now I switch over to bigger states. So um, with the eight deals, I'm at about 300,000, you know, so that's where I'm at now. 
Okay, cool. So that's a little bit below average in terms of what we see, but that makes sense based on what you said, you know, with them being in uh, areas that are uh, a little bit less of a price point. And we saw that like me and Jerry Ricky entered Pittsburgh together maybe four years ago. And mm -hmm. I think the first month we bought 11 houses and um, in Pittsburgh, but the problem was that they were all like worth 50 grand, you know? Mm -hmm. So we were buying them for 20 and selling them for 50 and which is fine. But then it's like the, the transaction cycle is the same amount of time and effort, whether you're doing a deal that makes you 30 grand or 300 grand. You right. know, so we exited Pittsburgh. We did some underfinance and and that that was fine, but we exited Pittsburgh because at that point the prices were just too low. So mm -hmm. that, that makes sense. Um, gang, if you have a question for Marcel, just uh, raise your hand virtually on Zoom and we'll get to a few questions at the end. Um, while you guys are doing that, I mean, last question for me, dude, and I'm happy to to hear whatever you have to say on this. I mean, what advice do you have for people that are struggling in the business, like give them two or three like actionables that you think that they should do to, to, to go from struggle to success and, and how we do things. Um, just how I see it. Right. So with the, with the success, it's going to be some struggle. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out what's worth it for you. Like for, for me, um, I have two small children. Yeah. The reason why I wanted to dive in so fast and move and move on it is because I wanted to put them in private school, which I did. Um, so both of them are starting private school next month. And um, when you have certain desires and certain goals, the struggle doesn't seem much of a mm -hmm. struggle. <laughs> you know yeah. Because um, when you've been through certain circumstances, um, you start to reason differently. What might be, you know, if you go to the gym, you see somebody lifting 400 pounds and it's nothing for them. And you see somebody struggling with 50 pounds. But if you keep working at it, you could get to, you know, you could get there. So uh, maybe over just years of experience of dealing with different circumstances and so on, I just learned to keep the main thing, the main thing. Mm -hmm. And the main thing for me is just um, getting to my destination, you know, hit my goals for myself, my children, my wife, you know, and everything else. Unlike nursing, real estate is not life or death. So yeah, whatever struggles it is, it can be worked out, you know. So well, that that's true. I've always said in real estate, there's no real emergency. Even if a house burns down, that's why mm -hmm. we have insurance, you right. know? So hundred percent. So how <laughs> golf carts, um, <laughs> how helpful has investor creator been with your growth within this? Extremely helpful. Um, more from the mindset uh, perspective. I remember in the package you guys sent this book, the pitch anything. Yep. And um you just kind of rewired my brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember um going on vacation the end of December as I got the package. So I got to read the book on vacation. Um, uh, it was perfect. And then just going through it and just say, Oh, I didn't know this, I didn't know that. And just um even with the sellers, just maintaining the frame um with my Lenders maintaining the frame, just having a whole new uh, viewpoint, uh, uh, and it's changed things drastically. Now I'm sitting in my new office um, because I just couldn't work from home anymore. So, yep. because just keeping up with everything and organizing everything, so the growth has been pretty good in seven months. It's been it's been fun. Yeah. Have you accomplished more than you thought you would when you started? <laughs> I think I was talking to Jen Baker. I told her my goal for the year was, uh, I think, four or five hundred thousand for the year. Okay, okay. And I was, I was even, I, I mumbled it out because I wasn't sure, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But now I'm looking at it I'm like, no, I could, I, I could do more than that now, you know. So yeah. What do you so think you'll do your first year? I got five months left. I could hit the million. I yeah. mean, um, I'm in a different uh, 
different states now. Um, I understand the process now. My confidence is more. I have yeah. more PMLs. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to limit it, I, I, but I think I yeah. could do seven figures. Yeah. I love that, dude. I, I'm yeah. I'm excited to give you your seven figure award. Uh, whether it's next mastermind or the one after, I know you'll hit it in one of those. Uh, mm -hmm. You have a few, and dude, thank you so much for being with us. Do you have a few minutes for some questions? Sure. Yeah. All right, cool. So Tommy in the chat says, what has been the best marketing strategy and what was your first actionable step once you started with Investor Creator? Uh, so marketing strategy, I do PPC. My budget is... 2000 a month and I get about a lead a day and I've been doing that. That's the only marketing I do now. Cool. So yeah. I guess to put some ballpark numbers to that, your marketing budget is 2000 a month. You've mm -hmm. been marketing for six months. Yeah, six months, six yeah. months. So you spent 12 K on ads and captured right now, 300,000 in no, it's 400,000 in total equity. Yeah. Right. And then you have all other deals that are in processes that will capture as well. So maybe yeah. five, 600 grand from 12,000. Yes. Yes. Cool. By the time right. I, so, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Cool. Um, Troy, you got a question, man? Um, hey, congrats, man, on, on all the early success. Um, you, you, you hit something that, that I can relate to. So I was, I just got back into to real estate investing myself um like last year and i had a mindset that i'm still struggling a little bit with the mindset change of what i thought i knew versus what that brad and jim and jen i mean james and jen are, 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 are teaching and all the other stuff that we're learning so um I'm, I'm struggling with that but my question for you is now that you're starting to have some success and with your marketing and I did the same thing and I'm seeing like all this activity are you seeing that are you finding that your days are longer easier to manage or has your time from when you were doing your job has that just like do you just feel like inundated with with all the the new activity and all the stuff that you have to manage you know, and, 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 and all that stuff, like, like, how are you managing that, that time? I guess is the question. Mm -hmm. So, um, the more leads I get, it puts me in a better position to choose the best deals. So I, I like that my um, deal flow is picking up. Also what I'm doing now, because there's so many deals and then withholding the properties, um, managing the notes, things like that, um, incorporating a CRM, um, client relations manager, to kind of organize everything for me and help me keep track so I don't miss any payments or um, or anything like that. Like last, one of my properties, I got a letter in the mail from code enforcement. I forgot to schedule landscaping, things like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so making sure that I stay on top of everything and um, using a client relations manager. And also now um, I have a couple of people from the group that I, that I brainstorm deals with. It helps, you know, um, just to get different point of views, um, just to reason through things. Cause you know, sometimes when you get a second, third point of view, you kind of cut through the deals a little bit faster um versus when you have all these deals you think oh i have all these deals but when you have like a second third person you could kind of just step by steps don't think about the whole don't stop thinking about the whole right thing just right. do what you can do right now that's it it's like right 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 <laughs> that's it just slow it because right now you only just focus on right the one now. thing at a time yeah i'm trying because right, like you could be here you think about oh yeah did i call that realtor did that just right now yeah, yeah. Your, okay. your your tasks and just go through step by step. And that's and, the and last question. last last quick question for you. The, the the funding. I think I think we're all challenged with that, with the exception of Brad. Um <laughs> how do we how do we deal? How did how did you manage to work that end of it? Well, um I I used to think that that it would be a challenge, 
But the first deal I had um, really gave me a lot of confidence that this thing works, right? And it also um, helped kick kickstart my uh, PPC. And when I went to, before that, in the modules, I remember listening to, I think it was Jerry. He was talking about, you know, um, how to get private mortgage um, yeah. vendors yeah. and yeah. stuff, yeah. take them to Starbucks and talk to them and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So the, yeah. when I see that it works, and then when I saw my marketing and people actually calling me and want to do a deal and stuff like that, I know what's on the line, right? If I have 50000 in a deal or 60000 in a deal, I'm going to talk to people. I'm going to, you know, hey, you know, and the, they gave me the tools to kind of say how to do it. Mm -hmm. And the first guy, my first investor was actually the guy that painted the the my the, the deal that I sold first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he was like, "Oh, you do this all the time, stuff like that." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm actually you know started this company and we're getting deals all over the country, stuff like that." And I'm like, "Do you know anybody want want to invest?" He's like, "What about me?" And you know, he was my first investor. Oh wow. Um, so, so it does work. And you never know who has money. It's not who you think. It's not, it's not who you think. And trust me, when you get the deals and you're looking at deals and you see what you could make from the deals, you will take action. You will talk to somebody. You do what you got to do. You put it in a Facebook group because you see what's out there for you to make. So it's just a matter of believing in the program believe in 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 your deals and your ability to get them done. Yeah, Roger that. Well, hey man, congrats again. Great, great, great story. Appreciate the question, dude. All right, uh, potentially our next apprentice spotlight, Pranav. What's up, man? Hey, uh, <laughs> hey Marcel, congratulations, man. Hey brother, yeah. good to see you, Marcel. Have you been doing this? yourself or you have some team helping you to do this in the background how have you been managing i know you have little kids at home so how has it been for you uh, my wife she's been helping a lot especially uh, you know scheduling different things like if i need if i need a contractor to go over there or inspector so my wife is just my wife and i right now Gotcha. And mm -hmm. you have been spending like $2,000 in marketing. Have you thought about increasing your marketing budget since you know that this thing works? I will, but I don't feel I'm maximizing the $2,000 yet. Um, let me explain why. So the leads that come through 2, 3 a.m. like in the morning, um, I just incorporated the CRM to do speed to lead. So once I start maximizing those, then I'll increase the budget, but I'm gonna use up what I have first. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Okay. Thanks, man. Thanks for sharing. Congratulations again. Yeah. All right. Love it. Thanks, dude. All right. Nikita, do you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Um uh Marcel, uh, sorry, I was on the wrong uh mute, so I missed the beginning oh, no of this. But since you were talking about CRMs, um I'm I'm thinking about adding that to my list because I'm having trouble uh, kind of keeping track of everybody that I spoke with. Um, what do you uh, what do you use? What do you recommend? Um, for me, uh, what I use is uh, REI Automated. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a lot of experience with CRMs. It's kind of the first one I'm using, but it's for me, it's pretty good. It's pretty. Um, it helps me to stay on track, stay organized, because I'm not the paperwork guy. You know, I, I'll talk to clients all day. I'll I'll get contractors in. I like to be out in the field, do things. I'm operational, like you know, people's person. But um, it helps me to keep all the paperwork on track. Helps me to know how I'm doing as far as cost per contract. So all my um, key performance indicators. I could track it at the end of the day. So yeah. You said it was a CRM REI? REI automated. REI automated. Got it. Okay. 
Um, yeah. And is this, uh, uh, Brad, is this a call where we can, is this still a support call? Can we ask questions here or this is? Uh... So tag me or email me. We're just doing the uh, the spotlight tonight. Gotcha. Okay. That, that's all I had. Thank you guys. Cool. You all right, bet. No problem. All right. Last call for questions. I know Marcel has some other houses that he's got to buy. <laughs> Last questions. I actually, I have one more for you, Marcel. Yeah, jump in, dude. Sure. Um, so with, with sub three, are you solely just focused? Is that like your, your, your only strategy now, or are you still like trying to do, um, like, like rehabs or anything like that? Or are you just strictly just, you know, I am a no holder now. It, it all depends. Right. So I, if, if I had a choice, but I don't know what, what will come in uh, the next lead that will come in, but I prefer to do more, uh, less rehabs, right? Okay. Because then I have to monitor the guys. You know, I don't have a lot of staff right now. So monitor the guys, make sure they do what they're doing. A lot of these properties are out of state. Um, make sure that the materials are going where they're supposed to go. <laughs> you know, things like that. <laughs> um, so, but if, if the equity is there and it makes sense to do the rehab, if I can spend twenty to make an extra sixty, yeah. yeah, I'll do it. If it's if it's where I spend twenty to make an extra ten, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, you know, I'll yeah. just you know just sell it the way it is. It it all depends. You know, just kind of you just kind of have to weigh it out. You know? Yeah, yeah, I'm tracking that. Yeah, because we're 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 focused as far as like any rehab potentials, like in our backyard. I don't know about the virtual thing yet. So if, if, if we're going to do a rehab, it's going to be in our backyard, you know? So I was just curious about that. So, well, cool. you're, you're doing PPC, right? Yeah. Just started in, uh, with David, uh, middle of May. Yeah. I would say just go deal by deal. I mean, like Brad was saying earlier, you don't know what you will or you won't. You know, it depends on, you know, what the deal is. Right. And right. um, now it's easier to find workers all over the place because, you know, you have Tumtac, you got a whole bunch of networks that you can find people to get the job done. So you never know, you know? No, that's, that's facts. Yeah, 100%. And as Brad says, you know, you know anything for a price. <laughs> so. Well, I, I was about to jump in and say that, but I, I, I figured <laughs> yeah. anything works at a price. Yeah. <laughs> Roger that. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks, no man. Problem. All right. Last question for tonight. Michael Jenkins, go right ahead. Hello, everyone. Hey, hey. I just, hey, I just wanted to hop on and say congratulations to you, Marcel. It just reconfirms. I kind of felt the same way when that first lead came through. You know, it just confirmed all of everything that uh, had been wondering was it going to happen, you know. Uh, so. So yeah, uh, definitely excited about it. Uh, every everybody's story is always in, in, um, uh, inspiration. Right. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's just yeah. So I want to definitely hop on here and tell you, uh, congratulations. Keep going, and uh, I'll probably be reaching out to you <laughs> <laughs> whenever I got something come up. Yeah, and see how you're tackling it. Yeah, I love to yeah. bring. Like I said. Um, a lot of people in the group. I was on. I was on the phone one a.m. last night talking to a member in IC. We we're working through a deal. You know, <laughs> you know, people call me all hours of the day, so I I don't mind because it gets me the exercise. You know, so right, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, congratulations, yes, sir. Yeah, love all it, right, man. Thanks. Bye. Cool. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up. If I can help you, email us support at bradsmotherman.com, support at investorcreator.com. Appreciate you guys so much for being here. We have a lot of new faces, and it's always good to be around some some great people. So thank you guys for everything. Marcel, yeah. thanks again, man. I'll reach out to you one-on-one. -on -one. Congratulations on everything. Y'all have an amazing evening and uh, a great rest of the week. Yeah.